Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is look, this lecture is going to focus on animal development, uh, primarily from fertilization to gastrulation. Let's go ahead and start. What exactly happens when sperm meets egg? Well, um, here's looking at a sea urchin fertilization. There's five kind of steps to that. The first is the contact here. You've got the uh, sperm actually making contact with the egg's jelly coat triggering exocytosis of the sperm's um, ar archosomes. So you can see here the archosomes inside the sperm, and as that meets exocytosis of those archosomes into that jelly coat, of course, that starts to eat through those enzymes, uh, which is step two, step two here. And you can see that the um, you get the archosomal reactions, what that's called, hydrolytic enzymes released from the archosome making a hole in the jelly coat while growing actin filaments um, from the archosomal process or for uh, our, our oh goodness actin filaments form the archosomal process this structure protrudes from the sperm head and penetrates the jelly coat binding to receptors in the egg cell membrane that extend through the the vitellin which you can see here membrane or layer then you go on to step three in step three you've got the um, Contact and fusion of the sperm and egg membranes. A hole is made in the vitellin layer and allowing contact and fusion of the gamete plasma membranes. The, mem the membrane becomes depolarized, resulting in fast block of polysperm, or polyspermy. And then, of course, five, the cortical reaction. And this is where the fusion of the gamete uh, membranes triggers an increase in calcium of the egg cytosol, increasing cortical granules in the egg to fuse with the plasma membrane and discharge the contents. This leads to swelling of the pre space, hardening the vitellin layer and clipping of sperm binding receptors. The result of fertilization envelopes a slow block to polyspermy. So um, you can look at each step there. Of course, here's the sperm and egg coming together, the exocytosis, once again, of those enzymes. Those enzymes will uh, degrade that and then you got the actin filament that's going to bridge the gap there and then eventually you get the uh, uniting of the two membranes and then finally um, that will cause the reaction of the calcium to be released and also the hardening of the layer so that you don't get polyspermy that would be a, an issue right what exactly happens um, here you get those uh, so you can see them the contact the archosomal reaction, the membrane fusion, the sperm nucleus enters the egg, and then the cortical reaction forms. So what happens with activation of the egg? So calcium released from the ER, primarily the smooth ER. That's one of the things we've talked about with the smooth ER before is that um, it stores calcium. So if it's storing calcium, it's storing it because calcium ions inside of a cell will cause reactions to take place. So they're stored in the smooth ER. So here you've got the sperm and egg uniting, and at that point, wherever that is on the egg, there are several reactions that are going to take place, one of which is an, a release of calcium ions. And this increases cellular respiration, and it increases protein synthesis and translation, and it, it really is starting the process of cell division, in essence. So here um, we can see the effects of calcium. Uh, this experiment was done with a fluorescent dye that glows when it binds with free calcium. And you can see here's where the sperm and egg unite, and you can see that influx as it kind of goes across the uh, egg cell. So once again, here it is in graphic form, the sperm and egg um, unite, and that calcium will, those calcium ions slowly move their way all the way to the bottom. The release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol or the cytoplasm at the site of the sperm entry triggers a release of more and more calcium in a wave that spreads to the other side of the cell. This entire process takes about 30 seconds in sea urchins, um, and we'll look at it more again later. Timeline for fertilization of the sea urchin egg from uh, the first second of the binding of sperm and egg to the archosomal reaction, about two seconds. Increased intracellular calcium levels. So at this point, you've already got the fusion taking place at about 10 seconds. Cortical reaction begins, slow block of the, of the polyspermy, about 20 seconds. About a minute in, you got the, firm, firm, the formation of the fertilization em, envelope complete. And then you have increased cellular pH, increased protein synthesis, fusion of egg and sperm nuclei completed about 20 minutes. Down here to 40 minutes, the onset of DNA synthesis. And finally, 
at 90 minutes you get the first cell division. Uh, that's not a very long process. You'll see uh, the comparison to humans in just a second. So what happens in mammals? Here's the five steps, and I'll give them to you on the next slide written out, but let's look at them together. Uh, the first, you get, of course, the sperm migrates through the coat of follicle cells. There's a coat of follicle cells that is present in the animal that's not present in uh, that sea urchin that we just looked at. And this and binds then to the receptor molecules on the zone of pellucida of the egg. The receptor molecules are not shown here, but it binds. And then that causes uh, the archosomal reaction. Um, and in the archosomal reaction, you've got the sperm releases, once again, through exocytosis, the hydrolytic enzymes into the zone of pellucida. Uh, this will cause a breakdown of the zone of pellucida by enzymes allowing the sperm to reach the plasma membrane of the cell. The membrane proteins of the sperm bind to the receptor on the egg membrane and the two membranes fuse. The nucleus and other components of the sperm cell enter the egg. And then enzymes released during the cortical reaction harden the zone of pellucida, which now functions as a block to polyspermy. So here are those written out, so you can kind of see that again, um, as well as looking at what happens during cleavage. Now, cleavage, remember, is where uh, the cell division without cytokinesis, so you don't get a, um, you're getting a lot of cell division, but you're not getting the kind of separation of those two eggs. They're kind of staying, or those two cells, they're staying kind of together. Um, and you're not getting also a growing of the cells during that time. There's a lot of cell division going on, not a lot of growing going on. Uh, this creates blastomeres, and axes are formed at first cleavage in amphibians. And we're going to look at that here, uh, looking at the amphibian. Um, of course, here is the uh, tadpole, and of course, you've got three different axes, the anterior, posterior, the ventral, dorsal, and the left and right. The polarity of the egg determines the anterior posterior axis before fertilization even takes place. You have the two hemispheres. You've got the animal hemisphere up top, and you've got the vegetal hemisphere or vegetal pole down bottom. Um, so you've got the point of sperm entry, and when that happens, then you get the animal pole will literally shift, and it will cause a um, kind of a lighter, in this picture, a lighter gray area to form right there where that shifting took place. That is the uh, dorsal side of, the, of the, the organism. So right there, the dorsal has already been established, dorsal ventral, and of course, at the, po at, at the point that dorsal ventral has been established, left and right has been established because you get if you get a front and a back, obviously you get a left and a right. So um, all of this takes place, you see very early on in development and fertilization uh, as this goes on. Uh, then we get into gastrulation. Well, what happens in gastrulation? This is the movement of the blastula cells into the blastopore, creating two cell or germ layers. So you, this is actually going to help us create the ectoderm, endoderm, and eventually the mesoderm, which will be the layers between those. Um, I would encourage you to make sure you're looking at, at similar figures in your book to kind of follow this. So you've got uh, the animal pole and the vegetal, uh, ve vegetal pole. Um, of course, you can see here, the blue on top is the animal hemisphere, the vegetal hemisphere is down at the bottom. There will, at some point in the, um, over on the dorsal side, in, um, in, in the vegetal pole area, there will be what we call a dorsal lip develop. And you'll start to get an invagination of those cells into the blastopore. So as those come into the blastopore, um, you can see here, you're starting to develop kind of an inside tube area. As this grows in, then the animal pore cells, those, those, um, the blast, uh, the animal, uh, sorry, the animal uh, pole cells or the animal hemisphere cells start to grow down. And as they grow down around the vegetal pole, you can see it's encompassing that, you'll get this, you still have this inside growing in, and this is called the um, archenteron, archenteron. And this area in the archenteron, that will actually develop eventually into um, the 
uh, digestive cavity. So you're getting really the development, depending on the organism you're looking at, of either the mouth or the anus, sometimes both, will develop at that dorsal lip where that invagination took place. Um, eventually then that blast that the, you get the entire encompassing uh, area here, which will be the ec future ectoderm where it, it, the animal hemisphere is completely kind of encompassed the vegetal hemisphere except for the yolk plug down here at the very bottom. And then inside you can see those three layers. So because of that invagination that's taking place, you get this endodermal layer. You get the area between the endoderm and the, ex and the ectoderm, which is in red here, and that'll eventually be the mesoderm layer, and we'll talk about some of this a little bit more later. And then the outside now has developed a complete ectodermal layer. So you get this um, growing in on the blastopore, and that's important that growing in actually gives us that, that inside cavity for like the digestive uh, tract and things like that.